Welcome back, everybody. This is our Algebra 2 uh, Function Foundations Lesson 1, Intro to Functions Homework Review, Part 1. And so, again, some of the stuff is review uh, we have learned from before, but just to make sure we're good with this, it says determine for each of the following graph relationships whether y is a function of x using the vertical line test. So vertical line test is a test for graphs to determine whether or not the graph represents a function. And we know the vertical line test based upon the idea if you draw a vertical line anywhere on the graph and it hits more than one point, the graph does not represent a function. So let's get our vertical line. Let's see now, I'll use uh, maybe this one. And here goes a vertical line. And so we're gonna move vertical line um, across the graph here, anywhere across the graph. And so for number one, oops, Sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to get rid of these guys. All right, so here we go. Now, we see even right here, we see two points that are going to be, they're going to be uh, uh, hit with this vertical line here. So this, so here we see uh, this doesn't work out. So this is not a function. Okay, and I'll create another vertical line. Do a vertical line for each one of these. And for number two, as we move the vertical line across the graph, oops, we see that it's only hitting one point on the graph each time. And therefore, this is going to be a function. Sorry, my handwriting is terrible. Apologize for that. Okay, oops. All right, now for C. Vertical line. And we move it across. For C, we see again in the same way, this vertical line is, as it moves across the graph, and it can move either right, from, right to left or left to right, Every time it stops, it's only going to intersect at one particular point, one point in the graph, not two. Now, again, why does the vertical line test work out this way? Well, by definition, uh, a function is a set of ordered pairs so that no two ordered pairs have the same first member. Really what this means is um, an ordered pair has uh, two, two, two elements, input and output, and for every input, there can be only one output. So there's only one possible outcome if you plug something else, so put, put a particular, particular number into the function. And so this way, it kind of makes sense because if you got two different numbers, you wouldn't know which one was the correct one. And therefore we know from here that we have a function or not. That is a working function. So we will say this is a function as well too. So we, Yes, function. Okay, next vertical line. And we move this across here. And at this point, we see that, yep, this semicircle, all right, this semicircle, only one point. Now, I had to hand draw these and all. I apologize for the messy drawings. I apologize for this, though. But hopefully, it's helpful. You're going to get this now. So we see this works out the same way. Yes a function. Okay. Letter E. Okay. And let's draw a vertical line. And we see, oops, we see here that as we move across, we're going to hit more than one point. Okay. So, is it matter if it occurs more? Like, is it happen, if it happens just once, is it still no, still not a function? Most definitely. It has. You have basically have to have only one value for. And this is what some people say: for every x, only one value of y, uh, for every possible value of x. And so, if it occurs more than once, it's still not a function. But even with just one situation, still not a function. So no, not a function. And finally, for our question F, this horizontal line here, uh, graph, as we go across, oops, again, I keep doing that. All right, so as we go across, only one point does it 
each time. So, yes, a function. Okay. All right. So, let me put the full screen. So we see here in this case, there were two situations, A and E were not functions, and uh, four situations, B, C, D, and F represented functions. <clears throat> so let's take a look at question number two. All right. Full screen. What are the outputs for the input X equals five given functions defined by the formulas? Well, if the input is X equals five, that means Y would equal to, for the first one, three times five minus four. And therefore output Y would be 15 minus four or 11. So that would be output. And we might even write this as five come 11 if you want to. But the output, we're really, really focusing on output. So really output is 11 though. If we plug in five for the second function, Y is equal to 50 minus two times five squared, we would get 50 minus 2 times 25, because we do exponents first, or 50 minus 50, because then now multiply, and then we subtract, and we get 0. So we get 5 comma 0. All right, now, here when I say a function, it represents a, a rule that we are going to use for an input-output situation. We're inputting the x value into our function, okay, so our value of x will be replaced with y, and we want to find what the output is, the y value. And now, for c, y equals 2 to the fifth power, which is really 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 32. And therefore, we have a coordinate of 5 comma 32. But the output is going to be 32, though. So I write them as coordinates because we want to try, I want to kind of go back to a whole idea that a function has inputs and outputs, ordered pairs, if you will. Okay? Now for question three. Evan is walking home from a museum. She starts 38 blocks from home and walks two blocks each minute. All right. So Evan's distance from home is a function of number of minutes she has been walking. So in this case, what, which variable is independent and which variable is dependent? Well, in this case, when we're talking about distance and time, because uh, we have it set here, um, we have our time, okay? Our time is, in, is the independent variable. Now, why is it independent? Well, because in this case, our distance from home is dependent upon how much time has passed. You're saying, well, isn't it dependent upon, isn't it dependent upon um, how many blocks she's walked? Yes, but in this case, the number of blocks she has walked is going to be two blocks per minute. And so therefore, the time will determine the, you know, in this case, one minute means she's walked two blocks and therefore she is 36 blocks from home. She walked two blocks two, for four minutes. Uh, two, uh, two minutes actually. She's walked four blocks, so two minutes will be four blocks, and therefore she's now 34 blocks from home. So the time is independent, and the distance, distance from home, is dependent because the distance depends upon the time passed, which will tell us in this case, uh, in this case, how far from home she is, because based upon how fast she walks. So. At zero, t at zero minutes, she is 38 blocks away from home. After one minute, two blocks later, she is 36 blocks away from home. After five minutes, she has walked 10 blocks. And therefore, 10, 38 minus 10 is going to be 28. And after t 10 minutes, she has walked 20 blocks. So 38 minus 20 is going to be 18. Now, the question is going to be, so that's how we determine these things. Determine equation relating distance d that Evan is from home as a function of t minutes. Well, our distance starts with 38 blocks minus every minute t, she travels two blocks. Therefore, we'll see it as 
D is equal to, or really not D, but D of T. And we this is how we had uh, labeled this function. D of T, distance dependent upon time, equals 38 minus 2T. And finally, determine the number of minutes that T that takes for Evan to reach home. Well, she is home, her distance from home will be, want to find D uh, when D of T equals zero. Well, that would be 38 minus 2t equals 0, or add 2t to both sides, 38 equals 2t, divide both sides by 2, then we'll be home in 19 minutes. Okay? Well, there you go. All right, so box that, and full screen. So this is our problem here, okay? And so these are basic problems we have. They will get more complicated, but this is a good place to start, though. All right? Okay, now, for our last question. Oh, we do this in one, or one, or one in the video. Nice. In one of the relationships, or one of the following tables, the variable y is a function of the variable x. Explain which relationship is a function and why the other is not. Okay, so we have negative 2. Ooh, let me just put full screen. So we see negative 2 to 11. So negative 2 comma 11. This is 0 comma 7. 2 comma 11. 4 comma 23. 6 comma 43. On this side here, we have 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 1, 1, 4, negative 2, and 4, 2. Well, okay, which relationship is not a function? I'm going to say in this case, well, it's got to be relationship two, okay? Now, here's the reason why. Relationship two, number two, is not a function because for, for the value of x, a value of what when x equals 1, there are two possible outcomes. When the value of x equals 4, there are two possible outcomes. For a relation to be a function, each value of x must have one and only one value, matching value for y. And therefore, that's why it's not a function. Now, all of the all the values for y for the first solution are different for e are different for each number. Now you might say, well, but Mr. Kong, look, there's eleven and four it happens twice for y. That's okay. You see, what it comes down to is that you can have the same y value for different x values. You just kind of have the same x value for different y values. Okay? Because the input has to give you a unique, has to give you a specific answer for that particular number. It's okay for our, our first relation to have negative 2 be 11 and positive 2 be 11. That's okay. You just can't have two different values. Like for the second relation, where, y, where x was 1, I don't know whether the matching y value should be negative 1 or positive 1. So that's, we're not sure what the output is. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of our homework review. We did it in one shot. Um, if you have any questions please, or comments or feedback, please leave in the, in the comment section below. And I would love to hear from you guys. Please leave a like for the video if you found it helpful. And subscribe to the channel to know when new videos are added. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves and be safe.